Hello everyone. Our leader today is Mr. Arkadeep Chakraborty. He is the DGM HR at Godrej Consumer Products Limited. He comes with over a decades experience and he is here with us at L&D today to share about his journey, a little bit on HR, leadership and about the industry. Thank you so much for joining us today Arkadeep. Thank you. Thank you Rashi. Absolutely. So Arkadeep, before we jump into the intellectual stuff, we'd like to know a little more about you as a person, right? So can you talk about your childhood days, how were you at a, as a person while growing up? Okay. So my my childhood uh, I was never at one place. So uh, I I you know early part of my childhood was in a place called Hardwar. Okay. And uh, and and then we moved to Calcutta. Mm -hmm. uh, so my childhood was broadly divided into these two places. Yeah. Very different from each other. Hardwar was a quaint little uh, hill town and Absolutely. very beautiful. My father used to work for Bharat Heavy Electricals, so we were there. Mm -hmm. And and then we moved to Calcutta, so it was a paradigm shift uh, for me to come from a very small town where everybody knows yeah. everybody to a large metro city, uh, yeah. and 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 then so on with the uh, uh, you know. Then I moved on for my education to different different places so i think yeah, sure. that's where uh, my childhood was okay tell us a little more about your parents you know how were they as when you were growing up so my my, my father was an is an engineer he was working with bharat heavy electricals uh, we were in uh, hardwar where we have a very large uh, township and a manufacturing facility right uh, so a typical uh, middle class family with a working dad and 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 the mom managing the home i am the only child so okay and uh, I, I used to be fairly notorious and curious at the same time so yeah, i think sure. uh, they they had their handful with me true true yeah. so what were your interests when you were growing up as a child in fact so i think as a child uh, uh, you know i i was typically curious i i was always very interested in in languages a lot okay. right uh, apart from the the so called uh, uh, much to the chagrin of my father who always wanted me to concentrate on the science and the maths part right. i had a flair for languages so i i always had that literature bent of mind to a certain okay. extent true okay uh, so you know when you were a student let's say did you know uh, what you wanted to be when you grew up uh not not really that much oh, i had mean, aspirations probably i think uh, the aspirations kept changing from uh, different time to different time sure. some aspirations were uh, which i which my father bestowed upon me mm -hmm. uh, some which were i started realizing maybe i like to do that okay. and and then eventually things started evolving uh, and and then and, and you know started falling in its own place right. uh, so i i think there are two kind of uh, uh people right even mm -hmm. when i look at my peers my friends uh, from school and from college uh, people who are very clear as to what they wanted to do and went in that direction right. and then there is a separate set of people who who made their own path as sure. they as they went ahead and as they evolved so i think i i belong to the latter part interesting so then uh, talking about your journey after that you know after your ed education you everything do you remember the first day of your job and how did you land that job Oh yeah I mean the first day of my of my job was uh, so obviously I got I got placed after my MBA right. uh, through campus and before that I had a tryst uh, you know because I was working after engineering in 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 a tech kind of a company uh, mm -hmm. and uh, but I would take that aside because that was very short so my okay. first uh, long term job was after my MBA I got placed through the college uh, you know as a campus recruitment right and and the first day at job was uh, was as exciting as any any for anybody else because you, you are a management trainee coming in so you are treated like royalty for a few days at least before right. reality kicks in <laughs> True. Uh, so yeah so i think the first day of my job was pretty nice okay so uh, what led you to get, uh, you know getting into the hr domain what what is the deciding factor for you to join hr so i think it was uh, uh, probably at the uh, end of my engineering where i was trying to fathom which uh, I, i was very clear that i wanted to go into the uh, into the management field and then okay. the question was whether it's a marketing or whether it's an hr or whether it is finance right. and uh, at that point of time i genuinely felt that uh, this is one field where i i, I would do well because uh, that kind of leverages my strength a lot mm -hmm. so i was keenly interested in a lot of things in human resources which were going on at that time and i i yeah. felt that that is something that i would enjoy doing uh, rather than the other so i True. i think and that's why i chose that 
Interesting. You had a brief stint with ICICI Bank also at Kolkata and you handled mass recruitment drives. How did that help you in shaping your career today? I mean, looking back at it now. I think I always uh, uh, keep telling uh, a lot of people who are coming and, and starting their career in HR and yeah. uh, somewhere I have heard a lot of people coming and telling me I don't want to do talent acquisition. Yeah. Uh, I would like to reinforce that uh, it is the bread and butter of HR. Right. And no matter how much we want to do other things, talent yeah. acquisition is something which is extremely important, mm -hmm. uh, directly impacts an organization uh, and, and it has a lot of, uh, lot of thinking and strategy behind it. True. And uh, even when you start off your career, if you're careful enough and you, and you try to sit back from the operations and the execution of a mass recruitment drive and all of that and you mm -hmm. sit back and you try to understand why an organization is recruiting the way it is recruiting it, it's it's very clear and i think that's my learning from icic icic was uh, what we say an execution par excellence uh, you know in hr right where when because there's a huge amount of hiring that they uh, used to do uh, but the way they had designed uh, their uh, uh, you know entire talent acquisition framework the mm -hmm. different channels that they used to have they never dependent on one channel to get people Right. Their philosophy behind it, uh, the fact that they looked at it as a supply chain problem rather than an HR problem uh, is, is a very core fundamental learning that I got at that time. And I think talent acquisition is also one part of HR which is very close to sales. True. It has targets, it is extremely measurable, yeah. right? And yeah. it, it gives direct impact immediately. Yeah, it's very definitive. It is very definitive. I mean, there True. is no ifs and buts in talent acquisition. You You have to hire just like sales has to do sales there yeah. are targets uh, and 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 the challenge is that with that pressure in mind how do you uh, make your system so good yeah. that you get the best of i won't say best i said the optimum talent into your organization at the right cost right right and i think that that is the real learning uh, for anybody who who is True. working at that point of time in such a large organization with such huge uh, talent acquisition requirement yeah. that's what you learn from there Absolutely. Actually, uh, now I look at it differently when you put in the sales context to it. Yeah, it, it definitely correlates right. in, in itself. Uh, now, you've been in the FMCG industry for quite some time, right? Tell us about the industry from the recruitment perspective and uh, the challenges and other nuances that you faced over time, you know, from a recruitment perspective in this industry. So, uh, I think... Uh FMCG recruitment uh, or FMCG as an industry yeah. is again is again a very very fast paced industry right mm -hmm. uh, broadly if you look at most of the FMCG companies operating in India primarily they are sales organizations which is backed by very very strong uh, you know manufacturing setup at, right. at, as a backbone right? right so large part of their recruitment <clears throat> always happens around sales right now, if you look at that and divide it into two parts, there is one part which is your strategic uh, recruitment, which is typically the mid-level and the senior level hiring which happens. Right. And then there is at the entry level, uh, you know, the, the sales force which we hire. Right? The FOS. Or yes, the field officers or the sales officers, right. you know, that, that part that we uh, hire. And uh, uh, I, I find it extremely amusing when we say that uh, uh, we don't have jobs because uh, if, if we don't have jobs, we are always searching for uh, people and, and this, this churn is always going on. Right. It's not only about the organization I have worked with, but many other organizations. Right. I think the right thing to say is that do we have the right people to, you know, get for the job? Jobs are there, True. but do we have the right options to get in and, and, and do that? So I think that's the primary challenge uh, uh, which not only FMCG, any any industry, whether it mm -hmm. is pharma, whether it is banking, whether it is FMCG, at an entry level is facing today. True. That's the biggest challenge. I think the attrition is the highest. Attrition is the highest and I think we, we need to, some things we need to accept that beyond a point you will not be able to control uh, attrition. The only True. way you can Math, you can minimize the impact to the business mm -hmm. is by having pipeline ready and and this pipeline different industries are, are managing in a different, different. way uh, uh, banking fortunately is, is very organized in that yeah. so a lot of large banks have come together they run programs where uh, they have ready pipeline and True. they've invested in that 
A uh, lot of other industries like uh, FMCG till now we don't have a collective effort in creating this uh, you know talent pool. Right. Banking has that, but FMCG till now I haven't seen five big organization coming together mm. and and saying that we will have a talent pool ready and we'll hire from that. From that. There's still very each company has its own way of managing that. True, true. Now, Arteep, you've handled really uh, good sizes of mass recruitments, right? And I feel uh, the general people out there, they uh, they have a very different perception of what a recruitment drive is or rather what a mass recruitment drive is. Can you cut through all that and give us uh, very simply to what a uh, really mass recruitment drive means? Right. I think recruitment or as we call it talent acquisition is an often... Uh, unglamorous uh, yeah. part of HR which uh, a lot of our young friends don't want to do. Yeah, they would shy away from that. Yeah, so. they would shy away from that because uh, it, it seems uh, a little unglamorous. Yeah. Uh, but my experience with uh, recruitment has been absolutely wonderful. I, I love doing that and I, I feel that's one uh, function which is always going to be the bread and butter of HR no matter True. what, whatever we talk about. And uh, when you when you work with organizations which are very large mm -hmm. and have a large intake of people at the at the frontline level, right? right uh, you know, then then you really you really get to understand how this entire machinery works, right. and and what's the uh, what's the strategic concept that is going behind that. Right. So I'll give you an example. Like uh, when I was in ICICI Bank, and I remember that that was a time then uh, there was a uh, ruling saying that anybody who is selling a bank account or in any banking services mm -hmm. needs to be on the role of the bank. Mm -hmm. Earlier people were doing it through uh, third parties, third parties and all of that. And and, and we remember that uh, we suddenly uh, you know got this uh, uh, information that we have to hire some eight ten thousand people in a in in you know four to five months time, right? Because wow. everybody has to be on the roles of the company, right? right? And 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 in between all those things that we are doing. Mm -hmm. When you sit back and understand how, uh, you know, a sound recruitment philosophy, which is backed by a sound strategy and execution, mm -hmm. really comes and, and helps the business, I think that's the learning. Right? Sure. So when we had to hire so many, uh, you know, uh, uh, people at the same time, yes. you can't depend on one way to do that. So, uh, you know, we had, I remember, two to three channels to do that. One was a normal channel, which everybody does, right? We we call people, people apply on our career sites, etc. We give right. some job advertisements, and and then from there we we apply a selection procedure, and from there we select. Yes. But that would only uh, that's a very laborious one, and it would it would only result in ten to twenty percent of our rec uh, total requirement, right? Okay. So we uh, from a banking perspective, there were two more channels that that were developed mm -hmm. at that time. One was uh, an industry academia partnership, uh, at that time it was with NIIT for a program called IFBI, okay. where all the banks, uh, they kind of got together. And I remember the, the philosophy behind that was that, you know, we, we really want people who, who are, who can understand English, who, who can do basic mathematics, who want to work, really have that intent to work and make a mark and, and start a profession. Right. And who can come on the first day to the bank and be productive? Right. Right. I think these were the two very important uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Now, once we realize that we are looking at only this right. and not a walking, talking God, it became mm -hmm. a supply chain problem, right? And right. how do I solve this problem? And that's when these extra channels were added. Mm -hmm. One was uh, this partnership. People, uh, you know, students would go and do this course. And, and then from there, they would get an internship into banks, so they will get a real-time understanding of how banking operation works. And from okay. there, different banks were hiring. Okay. The third and the one which is most close to my heart was the probationary officers program, okay. which which runs almost like any PSU bank probationary officer. There is an all India test, and then there are interviews, and from there you kind of hire people. Right. The difference there was, uh, I think, we were very clear that we are targeting. Uh, tier 2, tier 3 towns, very okay. small places, simple graduates uh, mm -hmm. who are who have gone through our selection process, get selected. Mm -hmm. And then we will, uh, you know, we, we had a setup with Manipal mm -hmm. and they would go there for, a, I think, nine months or one year program. They would learn banking operations, which is something that we have designed. 
customized okay. to our needs right? right and additional things like uh, you know personal development uh, you know uh, public speaking etc etc and when you see them after that course mm -hmm. from where you had interviewed them uh, you would realize that how your entire process how your entire recruitment has transformed lives of people okay. has uplifted some person from this level to this level and made that person independent financially as well as professionally can you share an example of any yeah sure i think i, I remember i i, I was uh, you know we, we we used to do this drives in uh, in in certain uh, uh, campuses some engineering right. colleges because we needed space and i i was in this uh, place in uh, somewhere close to asansol okay. uh, we had a college and we were doing this uh, professionally official drive and me, i was there along with me a uh, regional head was also sitting. We were interviewing people, mm -hmm. and there was some construction going on at okay. that time. And uh, we were in, people were coming, candidates one after another, and we were interviewing them. And I saw this young chap, you know, mm -hmm. standing at the corner, and he 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 was just not dressed as if he was coming for an interview. Mm -hmm. He was a way, and for a moment I thought maybe he is part of that entire group of people who are working on the repairs there. Okay. Right. But he okay. was keeping on, you know, he kept on seeing us again and again so after some time i couldn't resist i asked him what are you looking for are you searching for something mm -hmm. and he very meekly said that you know, sir i have actually come for an interview and i have oh. been i have cleared the selection procedure the written test and everything today is my date i have come for an interview so i said okay then you come and uh, we had an interview with him and uh, throughout the interview he he was so shy and he he just didn't want to speak he would keep looking at the ground Right. Uh, and most of the questions we were asking, he didn't know how to uh, express himself. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, at the end, he just told us one thing: that sir, I've cleared the selection round. Mm -hmm. I can tell you whatever you teach me. I will do my best to work. Okay. I come from a very very poor family. This is my only chance to make a living, a proper, decent, respectful living. And and something struck us. And and uh, I think uh, that's the beauty of recruitment. You always don't go by uh, qualification, qualification and signs of selection. Sometimes right. you also take this uh, intuitive gut calls, right? right? And we did. And and one one year later, when the probationary officer batch was being commemorated uh, in ICICI, they had passed out, and you right. know, and all of that. Uh, there was this smart young chap wearing a suit and a tie. He came to me, and, and you know we were all there, all the HR managers uh, right. in, in that function. And he came to me, and, and and he said that how are you doing? I hope you remember me. And and I I couldn't I couldn't place him. He looked familiar, but I couldn't place him. Mm -hmm. And then he reminded me that you hired me in Asansol, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And I could not believe my eyes that how much this person has actually changed. And the story doesn't end there. After I left ICICI, he actually called me one day. Mm -hmm. And he said that I have got the best uh, salesperson award, and I have uh, been awarded, and I am going for a trip to Switzerland. Wow. And he told me this has all happened because on that one day you took a chance and gave me a chance. True. Right. True. Uh, so yes, recruitment is a, is an extremely uh, target oriented things, but right. uh, if you sit back and if you see, sometimes the right strategy also has a lot of. Uh, fulfillment for the True. recruiter also so True. i think that's that's one of the stories i i close uh, you know hold very close to my heart True. and i think that one decision changed a person's life uh, forever right so i mean uh, mass recruitment is not as easy as it comes it, it is not it has its own uh, <laughs> pitfalls it's very challenging it's yeah. very mundane at times True. Uh, but i think ev ev everything that you do there is always learning True. And there is always a silver lining, yeah. which gives you that fulfillment and satisfaction. I look at it as an opportunity to give others opportunity. Absolutely. Now that you've given so much clarity on yeah. it. Well, thank you for sharing the story with us. Sure. Now, uh, did you have mentors early on in your career, and did they help? How did they help you in you know shaping you out personally and professionally? I had I had mentors. I I, I think I was blessed with having uh, very good bosses very early on in the in the career. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I was I also have a very unique uh, experience because uh, my first job when I started off very soon I think three months of working there mm -hmm. I started working with a group head HR 
Oh, right. So, so therefore, the 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 kind of perspective at that level you get right. is is very different from when you start reporting to somebody who is probably at a mid senior level mm-hmm. has you know. Uh, so, I think that really helped me. Uh, fortunately, he he has. Uh, I mean, I I worked with him in that organization for one year okay. only, yeah. and then moved to different places. Uh, but still now, you know, even now we are in touch. Uh, he knows what career decisions I take. I, I consult him, mm-hmm. and I think the biggest part of uh, the mentoring that I have learned from him and other of my managers are uh, is that they they never tell you what to do. Right. Right. They right. they will only facilitate, ask you questions, right. and help you make your own decisions. And and sometimes you need that very objective sound sounding board where you can. You know, uh, get an answer because answers are within you. Yeah. You don't need to be told what to do. True. true. So I think that's what a mentor really helps you to. Right. And I'm sure he's the person has been a key. Yeah, yeah. He has world. been he has been a key key contributor personally, right. uh, professionally. You know, and and he has true. told me where I've gone wrong. He has told me where I've gone uh, got uh, gone right, right. You know, things like that. So it it really helps. You know, true. when somebody is without an agenda, hearing you out and and using his or her own experience right. trying to tell you different perspectives of a particular decision that you are going to make mm-hmm. uh, that helps you a lot True. that helps you a lot absolutely well uh, that was uh, arkadeep chakraborty uh, i for sure did learn something in this conversation uh, i'm sure i hope you do too thank you arkadeep yeah thank you <laughs>